Good day, Wonder Nurses. I'm Nurse Anne. Our video for today is about pediatric nursing. If you want to assess your knowledge and learn more on this subject, watch and try to answer the seven questions that I prepared for you. Each question has 30 seconds. Then after answering all the questions, the correct answer, rationale, and a short discussion will be provided. So if you're ready, let's start. Question number one. Time's up. Let's now answer all the questions. Question number one. In assessing the growth and development of a child, Nurse Mijo is aware that there are principles that we use as a guide. Which of the following is not included? The correct answer is D. Rate and pattern of growth cannot be modified. Let's review the principles of growth and development. First, growth and development are a continuous process that starts from conception until death. It has a sequence or with the same pattern but with different rates. It follows a cephalocaudal and proximal to distal development. Finally, 
there is an appropriate time for the initiation of certain skills. Question number two. Nurse Mido is assessing four children in their health center. She noted that one of them needs further evaluation because the correct answer is B. A four-year-old or a preschooler is imaginative and they love to try role plays and dress ups. At six months, the infant should already start eating solid foods. The earliest month to introduce solid food is at four months. It is normal for a seven-month-old to have stranger anxiety and for a five-year-old to be afraid of injections. If you want to know more about Sigmund Freud and Eric Erikson's stages of development, you can check it out here or in the description below of this video. Let's continue to question number three. Which of the following assessment done by the pediatrician for a six-month-old infant that needs a follow-up and further evaluation? The correct answer is A. At three months, the infant can lift their shoulder and head with a slight head lug. And in four months, it is expected that the infant can control their head. The presence of head lug at six months may indicate neurologic dysfunction. Babinski reflex or the fanning of toes may be present for one to two years of age. The anterior fontanelle is usually close at 12 to 18 months, while the posterior fontanelle is at two to three months. Then finally, stranger anxiety is normal for infants. Question number four. To determine the difference between cephal hematoma and caput succedaneum, nurse theory knows that with caput succedaneum, the correct answer is A. Let's have a brief discussion about caput succedaneum and cephal hematoma. In cephal hematoma, there is an accumulation of blood between a newborn scalp and skull. This is due to pressure during childbirth or labor that ruptures the blood vessels in the skull. Then the affective part becomes ecumotic. In most instances, the newborn doesn't need any treatment because it usually resolves around 3 to 10 weeks. On the other hand, is caput succedaneum. There is swelling or edema due to fluid accumulation underneath the scalp. The swelling crosses the suture line and it resolves around two to three weeks without any intervention. Before we proceed, kindly click the like button if you are learning from our topic. And you can also subscribe to keep you updated on our latest videos. I do appreciate your trust and support. Let's continue. Question number five. Nurse Shin is assigned to a seven-year-old patient with an initial diagnosis of rheumatic fever. Which of the following findings can assist her in confirming the diagnosis? The correct answer is C. According to CDC, rheumatic fever is a disease that can affect the heart, joints, brain, and skin. Bacteria called Group A Streptococcus causes sore throat and scarlet fever. If it is not treated properly, it can lead to rheumatic fever. Early diagnosis of disinfections and treatment with antibiotics are keys to preventing rheumatic fever. The anti-streptolysin O titer test measures antibodies produced by your body in response to a toxin known as streptolysin O. It is a toxin produced by group A streptococcus bacteria. The normal ASO titer is below 200. Penicillin is the recommended antibiotic for rheumatic fever. Question number six. The nurse in the ICU is taking care of a child diagnosed with epiglottitis. While monitoring the patient, which sign indicates that the child may be experiencing airway obstruction. The correct answer 
is D. This position is known as the tripod position. It allows maximum air entry into the lungs. A child with epiglottitis should not be laid on his or her back. Epiglottitis is a medical emergency that must be treated immediately to prevent a fatality. It usually begins as inflammation and swelling between the base of the tongue and epiglottis. With continuous inflammation and swelling of the epiglottis, complete blockage of the airway may occur, leading to suffocation and death. Common infectious causes are Haemophilus influenza, Streptococcus pneumonia, and other strep species and respiratory tract viruses. Key manifestations are drooling, keeping their mouth open, leaning forward while seated or the tripod position, strider, and fever. Finally, question number seven. Which of the following statement is not true about cleft lip? Not true means we're looking for a false statement about the cleft lip. Let's have a short discussion about cleft lip and cleft palate. A cleft lip is the failure of the upper lip to close completely before birth. Usually, the lip forms between the fourth and seventh weeks of pregnancy. It is more common in boys and is related to folic acid deficiency. The surgery to repair a cleft lip usually occurs in the first few months and it is recommended within the first 12 months of life. The surgical procedure is called chaloplasty. On the other hand is the cleft palate. It happens when the tissue that makes up the roof of the mouth or the palate does not join completely during pregnancy. Generally, the palate is formed between the 6th and ninth weeks of pregnancy. Surgery to repair a cleft palate is recommended within the first 18 months of life. The surgical procedure is called palatoplasty or uranoplasty. The exact cause of the cleft lip and cleft palate are still unknown, but they are associated with the genes the mother is smoking or drinking during pregnancy, lack of folic acid during pregnancy, and some medications like anti-seizure and steroids. Therefore, the correct answer is B. Thank you for listening. I hope you learned and understand something. If you want more videos, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.